We want to welcome Brother Robbie Hawkins and Jesus up the ministry for us tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Good day right outside. One new time. I try. One new time. Amen. I love the Lord, don't you? Amen. Amen. God is so good to us. Amen. And just just want to take a moment here and thank everybody and and, and just all the kind words that's been said to me and just the candy that I got, you know, just the offerings that you've given me and things that you, you know, that, that you know, you might think sometimes that what you're doing is uh, not that big of a deal Come on, brother. in your eyes, but who you're doing it to, it could be the biggest thing ever. That's right. And that's why you should do everything you're doing as doing it unto the Lord. Amen. That's right. Come on. Amen. It might be something simple in your eyes and, and you think nothing of it, but to the person that you've done it for, it could mean everything. It could make their whole day yeah. of how you respond or what you say to them. Amen. When you when you greet them or when you pass them on the street. Amen. And and and, and I, I, I tried I tried and tried to train myself to give what I want to receive. Even as a minister, you've got to learn how to deal with people. And, 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 and church folks harder to deal with than saved folk sometimes. I mean, lost people, you know, sometimes it's hard to deal with them. But, uh, you know, there's so much that, that, that we could argue about and fuss about and go on about, but I'm like Brother Jr. man. I've been asked so many questions that just I didn't know how to answer. Yeah. You know, uh, I've had the question: of, Are we going through tribulation period, preacher? I said, Well, <laughs> I don't really know, and I'll be honest with you, I don't really care, and I'm not being mean. I want to be prepared no matter what comes. Amen. Amen. No, if somebody comes through that door with a gun. I want to be in the mind. Oh, I'd like to be under the anointing when it happens. Now, I'll be honest with you. But I want to be Come able on. to be ready. Uh, they say that song, I'm getting ready to leave this world. Church, let me tell you something. You better not be getting ready. You better be ready. Amen. We better be ready because he says he's coming in an hour that you think not. Everybody's trying to figure out when he's coming. Uh, yeah. He ain't going to tell nobody. No. Come on, man. So the angels in heaven didn't even know Come on. Yep. Amen. when he's coming. Just be ready when he comes. And that's what I want to be. I want to be ready. I don't want to be having a bad day. Uh -uh. <laughs> Y'all don't have bad days. Come there, on, brother. Amen. <laughs> oh, yeah, you, you ain't going to fool me. <laughs> I know you. Yeah. Amen. 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 You don't fool me. Amen. 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 Matthew chapter 22. Everybody has bad days. Amen. But you can have a bad day and still be saved. Amen. 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 You can be angry and sin not. Amen. Amen. I love the Lord. And I just want you guys to know that I love you and I appreciate you. I love Hamilton's Creek. I, I feel that. Uh, I'm a part of this church. And it, you know, when you first go away, and you, sometimes I'm gone for a little while and I get to come back because somebody asked me to come back. Or, or I can, you know, I don't always get to come when I want to come. You know, it just don't work out that way sometimes. But when I'm asked to come and I get to come, I feel so good. It's like I just get my cup filled up when I'm here, just being around everybody and and hearing the laughter and the and the testimonies and what God's doing and these young men preaching and things and just when I see those videos it just thrills me to death, Amen. Because I know I know that what God's doing is going to be great in the end, Amen. Amen. We're just looking at what's going on now, but you got to have a you got to have a vision beyond what's right here. You got to keep on going higher and higher and greater and greater. I'm talking too much, Pam. Give me the eye back there. Amen. Uh, Luke chapter 22, verse 31. Now, I got two places here. Huh? Luke. Luke. Did I say Matthew, y'all? Well, I tricked you. Luke. Oh, that what it was? Amen. Luke chapter 22. I'm sorry. 
This is also found in, in, in Matthew, so it might have been what I was thinking. It says, now in the 22nd chapter, in the 31st verse, it says, y'all got it? Yeah. Amen. It says, and the Lord said unto, said, and the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen the brethren. And he said unto him, Lord, now this is Peter talking back to to the Lord now. Lord, I am ready to go with thee both into prison and to death. And he said, I tell thee, Peter, the cock shall not crow this day before thou, hast, thou shalt thrice deny that thou knowest me. I'm going to skip down to verse four, 54. Amen. Check 22 and 54. It says, Then Peter, I mean, I'm sorry, then took he him and laid him, led him and brought him into the high priest's house. And Peter followed afar off. Got a lot of people like that now, don't we? Come on. And when they had kindled a fire in the midst of the hall and were set down together, Peter sat down among them. But a certain maid beheld him as, as he sat by the fire and earnestly looked upon him and said, This man was also with him. And he denied him, saying, Woman, I know him not. And after a little while, another saw him and said, Thou art are also of them. And Peter said, Man, I am not. And, again, and after the space of an hour, after another confidently affirmed saying of the truth, this fellow also was with him. For he is a Galilean. And Peter said, Man, I know not what thou sayest. And immediately while he yet spake, the cock crowed. And the Lord, now I love this right here, boys. I'm telling you, you don't think he ain't almighty and ain't everywhere at one time. Come on. You read this right here. Come on. Now he's supposed to be in there being tried, brother. It says, and the Lord turned and looked upon Peter and said, Peter, and Peter remembered the, the word of the Lord, how he has said unto him, Behold, the cock croweth, thou shalt deny me thrice. And Peter went out and wept bitterly. I want to preach to you for a little while on this thought. When the denier stood up. On, with the denier stood up. Come on. And I want you to know that the word deny just simply, amen, is simple one who denies. Amen. And I'm a, I'm a firm believer, Brother Wayne, that somewhere in our lives, every one of us has been in denial about one thing or another. Amen. We... We get pulled over and get a speeding ticket and we're in denial that we was going that fast. Yep. Amen. Huh? Amen. Somebody will say, <laughs> you're gaining weight and you're in denial that you're doing that. Come on. Somewhere, somehow, in our lives, we face the time where our minds and our mouths, amen, automatically deny that we are in a position that we are trying to say that we're not in. Yeah. Amen. And one of the greatest denials that you ever see is when you talk to somebody who is has got slothful on coming to church and slothful on praying and fasting and reading the word. Amen. 
they're in denial that they're backsliding on God. They'll say, well, preacher, I'm all right. And that's one of the key things that shows that they're not where they need to be. I'm telling you, you cannot miss church, amen, three weeks out of a month and say that you're all right. Come on. Amen. Come on. Come on now. Amen. Come on. Huh? Come on. You can't go four or five days and read without reading the Bible and say, Preacher, I'm all right. Come on, Come on now. Come on. Amen. If the only time you pray is when you're in trouble, you're in denial that you're in trouble. Amen. Come on. Amen. At one time or another in our lives, we are in denial. Amen. I remember when I was a young boy, amen, mama would say, I caught you doing this and I would deny it to the bitter end. Uh -huh. Because I know that I was going to get whooped one day or another, one way or another. That's right. If I admitted to what I'd done, she was going to bust me. But if I denied it, she was still going to bust me. Uh -huh. So I know either way it went, I was going to be in trouble. So I just denied everything that they accused me of doing. Come on. And we find ourselves, and, and let me tell you, let me say this. You can deny faster than what you think you can. Yep. Uh -huh. yep. And I thought about how everybody was testifying tonight about how if they come and they take this and they take that, that we'll stand for him. Amen. No matter what happens. Uh -huh. Here we find a man named Peter, a man that was was absolutely right there with Jesus that took the very steps that Jesus took. Come on, come on. Yeah. A man he ate with Jesus. A man he drank with Jesus. He was there when Jesus gave power to him over the demons and over the sick and over the diseased. He felt the power of God in his life and he was called one of the disciples and he would write history, but he's in denial. Amen. Fear brings denial. Yes, Trouble brings denial. Amen. amen. He was one, amen, that was strong minded and self willed. Amen. And Jesus know this when he picked Peter among the twelve. He know that Peter had a strong mind. Yeah, come on. He know that once Peter had set his mind to do something, they were nothing going to stop him. Come on. His mind would be made up and he would do it, amen, no matter what. And we find this when Jesus is walking along the road there. And Peter, he tells Peter and then he said, I'm getting ready to leave you. I'm getting ready to die. And Peter says, Lord, I'll die with you. Uh -huh. Come on. Jesus knows what and how we're going to respond to situations that we get in. Uh -huh. He knows exactly how we're going to act and how we're going to respond. That's why he teaches us in his word to be wise yeah. as the serpent but harmless as a dove. Yeah. Uh, he teaches us to be patient uh, and to wait. Uh, I believe the word said, they that wait upon the Lord uh, yeah. shall renew their strength. Uh -huh. uh, he knows whether we got what we say we got uh, yeah. or whether we're just talking a lot of mumbo uh, jumbo. Yeah. Uh, if you say you're one of God's, uh, you better have the power of God in your life. Yeah. Come on, that's right. Before you tell me how to live, you better be living it yourself. Amen. Come on. Amen. Come on. That's right. Come Peter on. was in denial. Jesus had told him, said, Peter, before the cock crows tonight in the morning. Before dawn, y'all know how them old roosters is. I used to have one. It was an old, uh, they was getting ready to kill it, and I took it home, one of them old fighting roosters. Uh, I'm going to tell you something. Them roosters can crow a lot harder than one of them old Dahmer chickens. Uh, Come on. Man, let me tell you something. When that rooster crowed every morning, about about an hour before daylight, uh, every 
every morning. I never needed an alarm clock to go to work because that thing would crow every morning. And I'd open my eyes. And every time I heard that rooster crow, I thought about old brother Peter. You imagine how Peter felt when he was sitting at dinner or at breakfast and out in the yard, the old rooster. Amen. Give out a big crow. His mind went rumbling back to the day that he sat by the fire among those that he didn't belong to. And the rooster would crow and he would deny. Come on. Yeah, come on. Well, I bet rooster, I bet old Peter couldn't stand the thoughts of a rooster crowing. I bet every time a rooster crowed, it sent chills up Peter's spine. Uh, every time he sat down to a fried chicken dinner, I bet chills uh, run all over him. Uh, yeah. Because it was a constant reminder uh, of what he said he wouldn't do. Uh, yeah. And I'm going to tell you all something over here. Uh, nine out of ten times, if we say we're going to do something, uh, we don't end up doing it. Uh, that makes us in denial about what we see. Uh, amen. Because Peter had said I will not uh, deny you uh, and the first thing he did uh, when he was questioned uh, was deny that he even knew uh, who Jesus was uh, 33 and a half years uh, Jesus walked this earth uh, and for three years uh, Peter walked with him uh, he had to know who he was uh -huh. yes, he did. Come on. but fear came Fear came upon him. And he denied that he knew Christ. Yep. <laughs> now it's bad enough to have known somebody and say that you don't know them. <laughs> or to, amen, but it's even worse when you know Jesus. <laughs> And you just come out of a good church service uh, where they had foot washing uh, and where they broke the bread. Uh, and he said, take and eat. This is my body. Uh, I ain't preaching nothing funny here. Uh, amen. When he said, take and drink, uh, this is the blood of the New Testament. Uh, amen. Uh, how could you deny? Uh, amen. When you just cut a soldier's ear off uh, and the Lord bent down. Uh, picked it right back up uh, and put it right back where it came from. Uh, fear came upon Peter. Uh, Peter uh, was denied by a rooster uh, because Peter uh, was a chicken himself. Come on. Bless him, Lord. Come, Come on. on. Right. He was a chicken himself. He was in denial that he even knew who Christ was. Uh -huh. Hey man, can you imagine the ridicule that Peter received from the other ten? What do you mean, ten preacher? Well, Peter made the eleventh one and the twelfth one wouldn't hug himself. Uh -huh. So I believe the other ten kept him in a constant reminder. Come on. Oh, don't act like we don't do that. Come on. Uh, Come on. Don't act like we don't do that when somebody messes up or doing something we don't like. We don't remind them about it every time we see them. Come on, brother. Hey, man, he's in denial here. Uh, and I believe the disciples reminded him, uh, Jesus told you you would deny, uh, and you done it. Uh, uh, see, on. they don't see what you do. They see, hey, man, what you do wrong. Uh, uh, hey, man, on. you can go to church 30 nights in a row uh, and go down the road and mess up one time, uh, and they will never remember you for what you was. They'll only remember you for what you did. Yeah, man, come on. Peter is is greatly reminded uh, that he denied Christ uh, before a multitude of people. Uh, while Peter, while Jesus is in there getting tried, he's outside denying that he even knows him. Yeah, come on. But what about the rest of them? Come on. Where were they? That's right. Come on. Where was they at? Uh, come on. That's right. Come on. They didn't follow him. Come on. Uh, the, sh the shepherd shall be smitten and the sheep shall be scattered. They scattered like a bunch of scared dogs. Yeah, man. Yep. Yeah. Peter follows along, but he's 
fall along way behind him. So they don't recognize who he was. Uh -huh. See, they some folks won't come to church here. Because they don't want to be recognized as one of them. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Oh, hello now. Come on. Uh, hello now. Uh -huh. I don't want to be re Oh, I love Jesus, but I don't want to be recognized as one of them Jesus only. Honey, I've got news for you. We ain't Jesus only. Uh -huh. We're on. Jesus everything. Yeah. Peter, one that was the strongest among the twelve, uh -huh. is now the weakest among the twelve. Yes. <laughs> he falls asleep in the garden of Gethsemane as the Lord is praying. Three times the Lord has to come along and kick him and get him up. Come on. But I'm going to tell you something right now, Brother Larry. There's going to come a time that God's not going to wake you up any longer. Come on. Uh, there's going to come a time, amen, that you're going to shake yourself uh, and you're going to find yourself lost without God. Come uh, on. Amen. It don't matter what we preach. It goes in one ear and out the other. Uh, it don't matter what we say it goes in one ear and out the other why is that preacher because they're living in a denying life yes come on come on oh, I'm preaching to you yeah, come on I'm preaching to you come on Peter is now marked as the denier the other ten knows that Peter is the one that denied but I like what the Bible says there when that cock crowed the third time, now Matthew says that Peter began to curse. Amen. He began to cuss that woman out because she recognized who he was. So let me tell you something. Guilt will cause you to do a lot of things. Guilt will cause you to do a lot of things that you would not normally do. Peter felt guilty because he had already denied twice, two times and the third time he denied and he began to cuss and to swear that man I have never known him. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Well, we think we're saved, don't we? Come on. We think we really got it all together, don't we? Come on. Huh? Come on. Peter walked hand in hand with him, but now. Now, he's cussing and swearing and denying that he even knew who Jesus was. Come on. And he runs out of the community and he finds him a cell, himself a place and he gets down on his knees and he begins to weep bitterly. <laughs> he begins to repent for what he does. Now I don't know The Bible don't say a whole lot about Peter After his denial It don't say a whole lot Between Peter and the crucifixion It does not talk About the disciples very much Only John the beloved Was the one that followed after So that tells me That not everybody's going to go after Jesus Amen But I want you to know the Bible don't say A whole lot about Peter Amen about what he does in this time of the, the crucifixion and the burial ceremony. So I don't believe that Peter went out and prayed a 10 minute prayer for forgiveness but I believe amen, that Peter went out and for three solid days he prayed and cried to God for forgiveness. Lord I want you to know it don't matter how black your sin is. It don't matter how far you've gone. God loves a repenting heart. God loves somebody that'll say I'm sorry. Yes. Come on. Come on. Yes, he does. Peter is now gathered together in the upper chamber. And he's sitting around with the other ten. Come on. And he's sitting there, and I'm sure that Peter cannot forget what he had done. Amen. I believe he was constantly reminded of how he denied Christ. Amen. But I believe as he sat there, he thought about how 
all the miracles that Pe that Jesus had done and how that amen he had raised that little girl from the dead uh, and how that amen he opened the eyes of blind Bartimaeus uh, and how Jesus told him I go away to prepare a place for you uh, that where I am there you may be also uh, I believe he looked back and he remembered uh, as John was quoting uh, I am the way uh, I am the truth and I am the life uh, I believe he was thinking about about when old brother Philip, uh, when Jesus looked at him uh, and said, Will you also uh, forsake me? Uh, and he said, Where can I go? Uh, thou hast the words of spirit uh, and of life. Uh, as he looked at Philip and he says, uh, I go to the Father. Uh, and Philip got excited and stood up uh, and said, Show us the Father. Uh, and Jesus said, Have I not been so long with you he that seeth me seeth the father also do the people see the father reflected in our lives today all these things now I know the Bible don't preach it like this amen but I believe Peter just kept sitting there thinking about how the Lord done this and how the Lord done that uh, and how he kept thinking about how he denied who he was uh, and how he denied that he even knew who Jesus was uh, sometimes when you get in the wrong crowd you can be pressured to do things that you wouldn't normally do uh, uh, come on now I'm preaching to you uh, amen sometimes if you hang out with the wrong bunch you'll start acting like the wrong bunch uh, that's why we can't have fellowship with darkness uh, that's why we gotta pick and choose who we hang out with uh, I got news for you if you hang out with a drunk, you'll become a drunk. Uh, if you hang out with a dopehead, you'll become a dopehead. Uh, you've got to choose your friends. Uh, and you've got to watch who you hang out with. Uh, even though Peter denied, uh, he come on back to where the rest of the disciples was. Uh, why did he do that? Uh, he knew that that's where his help lied. Uh, he knew that they had the words of Jesus Christ. Uh, and as they're sitting Man. I like what Brother Luke said. Hey Amen. The Bible says as they sit there. Hey Amen. The Lord came walking right through the wall. Don't tell me there's a Trinity doctrine. Hey Amen. There ain't the one God. He is the Father. He is the Son. And He is the Holy Ghost. How you think He walked right through a wall? It was the ghost part of the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. Yes, Lord. Try. I got off track. Come on. Sorry. Come on. You look here. He walked into the room right through the walls. And Thomas steps up and says, Well, I won't believe unless I see. Amen. And Jesus comes right through the wall and says, Amen. Trust your hand in my side, Thomas. Feel my hands and see that I'm not real. Amen. And for the first time in the book, somebody acknowledges him as who he is who he was and who he will be he fell down on his knees and he said my Lord and my God my Lord and my God I can't wait till the day oh my God till I can stick my hand in his side and Feel what Thomas felt that Bless day. Him, Lord. Come on. Come on. Thank you, Bless him, Jesus. Amen. Look here. Mary and Martha goes to the tomb. And they thinking in their self, who's going to roll the stone away? You see, they went there to anoint the body of Jesus. Because it was custom in that day to anoint the body of Jesus. They anointed their dead. Why did they anoint a Lazarus then? 
uh, why on the fourth day would he stink? Uh, amen. They must have not have anointed him. Uh, I'm going to tell you something, folks. Not everybody's going to have the anointing. Uh, not everybody's going to have the anointing of God. Uh, amen. I'll tell you why they didn't anoint his body. Uh, because they believed on that fourth day uh, that, the, that the spirit would circle around the body uh, and come back into it and give it life. Uh, but I want you to know on that fourth day, uh, Jesus said, roll the stone away. Uh, instead of the spirit circling the body, uh, the spirit was standing in front of the tomb. Uh, and he said, Lazarus, uh, come forth. Uh, and he that was dead uh, came forth. Yeah. Uh, he said, loose him uh, and let him go. I'm glad to know tonight uh, when I knelt down at that altar, he loosed me yeah. from sin's chains. That's right. When the denier stands up. Come on. Matthew 14 and 28. The denier stood up when Jesus came walking on the water. Uh, the on. denier stood up and said, Lord, if it be thee, uh, bid me to come. Uh, the denier stood up and stepped out of the boat uh, and walked on the shores uh, or walked on the seas. Uh, in Matthew 16 and 16, the denier stood up uh, when he said, who do men say that I am? Uh, some said thou art Jeremiah. Uh, some say thou art one of the prophets. Uh, amen. But he said, who do you? Uh, see, not everybody going to say he is. Uh, amen. But who do you say that I am? Uh, Peter didn't uh, give him the rest of them enough of time to answer. Uh, the denier stood up uh, and said, thou art the Christ, uh, the son of the living God. Uh, in John 18 and 10, uh, the the denier stood up and cut the soldier's ears off. Amen. But Jesus reached down and put it back on. In John 13 and 9, the denier stood up. When Jesus washed the disciples' feet, he stood up and said, Lord, you won't wash my feet. And Jesus said, if you're going to be a part of me, I've got to wash you. He said, Lord, not just my feet, but my hands and my head. When the denier stands up, things are going to happen. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Not my feet only, Lord, but my hands and my head also. Come on. Yeah. Oh, Lord. Yeah. Uh, uh, he was saying, wash everything I'm going to touch. Uh, wash everything I'm going to think. Yeah. Yeah. Wash everywhere I'm going to go. Yeah. Uh, oh, I'm just a denier. Uh, Peter was a denier from way back. Uh, he must have been a denier from a little boy. Uh, amen. Because the Bible called him a denier. Uh, but you better watch them deniers uh, when they stand up. Uh, in Acts 1 and 15, uh, the denier stood up uh, and said, There's 120 of us uh, in this room. Uh, in Acts 2 uh, and 38 uh, the denier stood up uh, and said repent every one of you uh, and be baptized uh, in the name of Jesus Christ uh, for the remission of sin uh, if I was really in a Jesus church uh, y'all get pumped up right there uh, amen the denier stood up uh, among the multitude uh, and when he stood up uh, were added to the church. Hey, come on. Come on. I'm just about done. Hey Amen. In Acts 3 and 6, the denier stood up at the gate called Beautiful and said, Silver and gold have I none. 
as he reached down and took him by the right hand the right hand represents power that's why the Bible says that Jesus has sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high oh Lord amen look here Peter said silver and gold have I none but such as I have I give unto thee in the name of Jesus rise up and walk and that man that had laid by that gate every single day every time his brothers brought him and dropped him off and came and picked him up but not today I don't need no ride today boys I'm going to walk on because Jesus because the denier stood up In Acts 5 and 3, the denier stood up uh, and said unto Ananias, Have you sold it for such a price? And he said, Yes, we have. I, could, I always just picture Peter sitting there at a desk when he comes through the door. And he said, Yeah, I sold it for that much. Oh, and Peter said, Well, let me stand up here. I can see him as he slides that seat back and stands up. Is this all right? And say, Hey, man, why have you lied? For you have not lied to me, but you've lied to the Holy Ghost. And about that time, as Peter stood up, and the knights fell down dead. And a little while later, here comes his little prissy wife through the door with a new pocketbook and said, Yeah, we sold it for such a price. He said, The men that carried your dead beat husband at the door is standing there waiting to carry you out. And she fell down there. You better watch when that denier stands up. That's right. Yeah. Uh, Come on. In Acts 10 and 26, we find a man by the name of Cornelius. Uh, now, church, I want to tell you something right now. Uh, this is where we come in at. Come on. We was not saved up until this point. The blood had been shed, but we wasn't saved yet. Come on. Huh? Think about that just for a minute. The blood had been shed, but we wasn't saved by it. Amen. We were still not in. They had denied him. They had crucified him. But we still had not been. We get hung up on Peter. We ought to be hung up on Cornelius. We get hung up on Paul. We ought to be hung up on Cornelius. Because Cornelius was an Italian. And you can't stop at the Italians. Amen. He got down every day. And he prayed to God. And God had his fingers in his ears. But he kept on praying. He kept on giving alms. He kept on paying tithes. He kept on doing good works. He kept on feeding the poor. He kept doing all that time. Even though he wasn't accepted. He, oh, we got folks that's accepted. It won't even do that much. Amen. But he kept on giving. And he kept on giving. Until one day, God starts talking to him. Come on. That's right. Cornelius, your arms has come up before me. <laughs> come on. Uh, yeah. Thy arms has come up before me. <laughs> hey man, I want you to send the Joppa uh, for a man by the name of Peter. Uh, oh, he's a denier. Uh, he's a denier. Uh, he's just an old tanner. Uh, he went from fishing to tanning, didn't he? Uh, uh, and Peter's down here and he's still self-righteous. Uh, he's sitting up on the roof. Uh, and the Lord speaks to him and says, there's a man by the name of Cornelius. Uh, he's coming to get you. Uh, and about that time, a sheep come down out of heaven. Uh, and it had all manner of beasts. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, amen. For the deer and the, and the bear and the pig and all them things. Uh, amen. They come down on that sheet and Peter said he told Peter said to rise and he, he said Lord so he's always back talking Lord nothing uncommon or unclean has entered my mouth but I like what Jesus said anything I clean is clean anything I bless 
is blessed. If I'm blessed here, I'm blessed in Walmart. If I'm blessed here, I'm blessed at the Burger King. At the Pizza Hut. I'm blessed. Come on. That's right. Cornelius, you sit down there and you get him. You sit down there and get him. Here comes Cornelius. Here he comes. He's working. Cornelius is in there, man. He's pumped up. Lord finally spoke back to me. Lord finally talked to me. Here comes Peter through the door. And Cornelius just falls down to his feet. Oh, Lord. Come on. Hallelujah. Peter says, man, stand up. I'm a man just like you are. Yeah, come on. Uh, I like what it goes on to say. It says that the denier stood at the door of Cornelius' house and preached to them the gospel. And Cornelius got baptized with the Holy Ghost. And just not Cornelius, but his whole house. All them little Italian runnings running around. Speaking blah, 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 blah. They got filled with the Holy Ghost. All them Italian servants, they got filled with the Holy Ghost. All them gardeners got filled with the Holy Ghost. Everybody in the house got filled with the Holy Ghost. And baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And that's all fine and dandy. But what you got to recognize is when the denier stood up, the door was opened and the Gentile race was saved by water baptism in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on! He told Peter, he said, Peter, I'll give you the keys to the kingdom. Yep. Keys fit a lock. The lock is on a door. Come on. Uh-huh. Key goes in the lock and opens the door. Huh? Come on. Jesus was the key. Come on. Jesus was the door. Uh-huh. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Them Jews didn't want him. They said, crucify him. Let his blood be upon us and upon our children. But I got news for them Jews. They didn't get his blood. We got his blood. When we got baptized in his name, his blood came down and covered our sins and blotted them out. And he gave us a right to the tree of life. You better be careful with them deniers. Because when they stand up, things happen. Come on. Yeah. Sometimes it takes a little bit to happen to them uh-huh. before they can find that they need to stand up. Come on. Peter stood up and unlocked the door to a Gentile people. Do you not realize that if he had not opened that door, if Cornelius had not, we might get some comments on this video. All right. If he had not preached to Cornelius, and if Cornelius had not cried out to God, we'd be lost today. We'd be believing some mystic gospel. Huh? We might be Buddhist. We might be one of old Muhammad's followers. We might do it. Because, you know, the flesh can't live without something. It's got to have something to satisfy. And that's why I choose to serve Jesus. He satisfies my soul. He's bread when I'm hungry. He's water when I'm thirsty. He's my doctor when I'm sick. He's my savior. And he makes a way for me. It don't matter if a thousand rise against me. All it takes is me and J-E-S you ask Jesus is his name that's right come on it's all it takes it's all it takes so when the devil tells you you can't stand up get up amen get up because you may have the keys to open somebody's door come on huh come on that's right Paul Saul came along and was persecuting the church killing everybody that 
Preach Jesus. Come on. Everybody. Come on. Women, children. Didn't matter to him. They said they used to sew them up in, in, in sheep skins and throw them out in the street and let the lions get them. Christians. Come on. But one day, Paul was on the road to Damascus. And he had letters in his hand. But if he found anybody preaching Jesus, uh, uh, bind them up, uh, Come on. kill them. You can kill them. Uh, bring them back and put them in prison. Uh, but I want you to know one day, the sun was shining bright. Uh, but there was a light brighter than the sun came down. Uh, and knocked him off of his high horse. And he said, Lord, who art thou? And he said, I'm the son of God. No, he didn't. He said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. I want you to know, we better get ourselves ready for whatever comes our way. Get Jesus on the inside of us, not just around us, but in us. Come on, that's right. Come Amen. on. That's the truth. It's easy to wear a Jesus shirt. Amen. Right. Amen. Come on. But it's not so easy to wear a Jesus heart. Amen. Come on. Or a Jesus mind. Amen. We got to be heavenly minded. Amen. We got to be heavenly minded. Amen. I love you guys. I love you, I appreciate everything you've done for me. I appreciate you for standing for the truth, for preaching me and letting me be a part of this church. Amen. And a part of this revival. All them videos, I've seen everyone. I ain't missed it. I got her beat. I ain't missed a night. Watched every one of them. When Brother Wayne sings, I watch him. When Brother Larry sings, I watch him. When Brother Hunter or Blake sings and she records it, I watch them. Why? Because I'm a part of this family. Bless come on, huh? come on. I'm a part of this family, bro. You doctored that baby and give that baby your name. Huh? But I want you to know that we weren't, some people say we were adopted by Jesus. No, we weren't adopted by Jesus. We were bought by Jesus. If you're adopted, when you get 18, you can change that if you want to. Huh? But when you're bought, you belong to somebody. Come on. We belong to him. Come on, I'm just saying.